Hey guys, I wanted to make a quick video right quick of what's going on. Um, right now, the coronavirus is ripping and tearing through the world and it is a pandemic as categorized. And it's been heavy on my heart noticing what's happening, that this was already written in the word, in the Bible, by the Lord Jesus, by the Holy Spirit, by God himself, wrote all these things that would come to pass. God is not surprised about what's happening right now, whether it's a coronavirus, whether it's an earthquake, whether it's a famine, whether it's anything in all human history, he already knows. Um, I walked into a Walmart yesterday and I realized as I was in there, I just saw mounds and mounds of groceries and food, probably food that people would never even buy, were gone or were in their, uh, in their shopping carts. And I felt as if I was walking through uh, just a, a spirit of fear. It was so thick. Mind you, I'm not, talk, I'm not trying to confuse wisdom with fear in terms of about being prepared, but fear is when we do not rely on the Lord, as if the Lord has removed his hand from us and we are in our own strength doing something that the Lord has not asked us to do because we are reacting from fear, from a spirit of fear or anxiety or worry. But we know those, a spirit of fear of anything that is not of the Holy Spirit is not from the Lord. What's from the Holy Spirit? The gifts of the Spirit. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithful, faithfulness, gentleness, long-suffering, and self-control. These things are what the Holy Spirit gives us in times of tribulation, in times of, of fasting, in times of imprisonment, in times of labor, in times of hard times, dark times, pestilence, earthquakes, martyrdom. It does not matter. That's what the Holy Spirit does. That's what God does for us. Gives us a godly peace, not a worldly peace. And I felt like I was walking through people who had lost their peace and it was so evident. I want to talk about what's happening right now because this is this is an opportunity for the body of Christ to evangelize like we've never done before. If you've never even shared the gospel or the thing that you proclaim that you actually believe with all your heart, soul, and mind about Jesus saving you for all of your sins, past, present, and future, today is the day to preach that gospel. The good news. It's not bad news. The good news to somebody. You do the preaching, Holy Spirit does the saving. We're not saviors. We're preachers. These aren't our truths. This is God's truth. These aren't our words. These are God's words. God has to hold himself responsible for these, not us. And I put my full faith and trust in what God says and about the things that are happening. Matthew 24 is well known as an end times uh, section in the Bible that talks about before Jesus' second coming, these things are going to have to happen before they come. These are all signs of a second coming. And I'm going to read it right quick. We're going to go to Matthew 24. Open your Bibles, open up your phone, whatever it may be. Matthew 24, I'm reading New King James. And we're going to go to uh, verse 4. And Jesus answered and said to them, he's talking to his disciples because they just asked him, when will we know when you're going to return? When do we know it's going to be the end? Take heed, no one deceives you. For many will come in my name, saying, I am the Christ, and will deceive many. And you will hear of wars and rumors of wars. We're seeing that. And see that you are not troubled, for all these things must come to pass. But the end is not yet. For nation will rise against nation. We're seeing that. Kingdom against kingdom, we're seeing that. Famines, we're seeing that. Pestilences, we're seeing that. Earthquakes in various places, we're seeing that. All these things are the beginning of sorrows. Then they will deliver you up to tribulation and, and kill you, and you will be hated by all nations for my name's sake. And then many will be offended and will betray one another and will hate one another. Then many false prophets will rise up and deceive many. And because lawlessness or violence will abound, the love of many will grow cold, but he who endures to the end shall be saved. And the gospel of the kingdom will be preached in all the world as a witness to all nations, and then the end will come. And the next big header, or the, the title is Great Tribulation. Um, and he says, Therefore, when you see the abomination of desolation spoken of by the prophet Daniel, standing in the holy place, Whoever reads this, let him understand. Then let those who are in Judea flee to the mountains. Let him who is on his housetop not go down or take anything out of his house. And let him who is in his field not go back for his clothes. All these, I'm, I'm, I'm going to stop there. All these are talking about end times events that are happening in the tribulation, that are happening up to when it's going to come up to the tribulation, and then the tribulation happens. And Jesus is talking about specifically all these signs have to happen before he will actually come back on the earth. There is a promise in the Bible in 1 Thessalonians, uh, 1 Thessalonians 4, uh, 1 Thessalonians 4.13, talking about a rapture. 
You may have heard it. You may have heard about left behind or anything like that. This is when the Lord Jesus removes his church from the wrath to come. Doesn't mean we won't experience tribulations in this life that we are today. And we have martyrdom, disease, cancers. Our bodies still, still age. We still experience all kinds of things. But Jesus promises Per Paul, when being downloaded by the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit downloading into him from the word of the Lord, that we are not appointed to God's wrath. We are the bride of Christ. Why is that important? I'm going to read it right quick. But I do, this is verse 13, 1 Thessalonians 4, 13. I, but I do not want you to be ignorant, talking to me, brethren, me, concerning those who have fallen asleep, those who have died in Christ. Let you, let you sorrow as others who have no hope, unbelievers, the world. For we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so God will bring with him those who sleep, those who have died in Jesus. For this we say to you by the word of the Lord. Paul got this directly from the Lord that we who are alive and remain, me today, Lord willing, until the, until the coming of the Lord, will by no means precede those who have fallen asleep in the Lord. For the Lord himself would ascend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel, and with the trumpet of God. And the dead in Christ will rise first, going up. Then, the, uh, then we who are alive and remain will shall be caught up together in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. Thus we shall always be with the Lord. Therefore, comfort one another with these words. I say all this to say, I. it is an opportunity for us to preach the gospel and see people's lives saved today. Why? I fully believe the rapture is coming. I fully believe we are in the end times. I fully believe that all these signs that are happening that are talking about Jesus' second coming, the rapture precedes that. The rapture of the church, since the church is not appointed to these things that are to come, the Lord is going to take his church out. It says no man knows the day or the hour of when this is going to happen. If that's the case, we have such a blessing, such a privilege, and such a responsibility as the body of Christ to say, Jesus is coming. There's no amount of groceries, toilet paper, uh, stocks and stocks of, of food, no amount of quarantine that can save you from what is to come. And if that's the case, if that is truly the case, then Jesus is coming and you need to give your life to Christ because the way the world is going to look today will look drastically different. It could happen in this year or a short amount of time. I don't know when it's going to happen, but it will look like night and day. It will literally be hell on earth and you don't have to experience that. The Lord Jesus wants to save you. We have an opportunity to evangelize an unbelieving world. And I am praying and hoping that you will use everything that you can since everybody's on social media right now freaking out about every small bit of news, whether it's real or fake. They may come across a, they may come across a post or a video or an encouraging word or something about you as a believer that leads them to Jesus. The time is now.